So if you've got a bunch of rusty parts you want to clean up but, like me, hate the idea of spending hours with a wire brush, well, in that case, it might be worth considering electrolysis. <laughs> So let me make clear right off the bat that this process is not going to work miracles, okay? It's not going to turn some rotten piece of metal into a shiny new piece, right? And it's not going to make metal magically appear where there was no metal to begin with. But if you're dealing with moderate levels of surface rust, then this is just the ticket. So let's take a look at what you're going to need. <laughs> right, this is my electrolysis bath, okay? Essentially all it is is a plastic container. Now it's important that it is plastic because you do not want your container to conduct electricity. So once you've sorted yourself out with a suitable container the next thing you need is a car battery or better yet a 12 volt battery charger like this one. Okay the positive side of the battery is connected to my anode. Now this is my anode. This is steel. Um, you could also use iron for the anode but in either case, it's very important to note that this is a sacrificial object. In other words, the part of the anode that's submerged is going to get eaten away as part of the chemical reaction that takes place. So, hence why I'm using a bunch of farmyard scrap and not, not my favourite set of tyre levers. And while I'm on the topic, it's also important, if you like the condition of your crocodile clip, to get it up and out of the way. Uh, the last thing I can think to mention about the anode is, um, in practice I've found the bigger the surface area of the anode, the better this process works. So, bear that in mind when you are choosing something to use for your anode. And the negative side of the battery charger wants to be connected to the rusty piece that you want to get clean. which in my case, for demonstrational purposes, is an old cylinder head I've had lying about. Uh, it is important that any oil or grease is going to massively inhibit this reaction. So if you're in any doubt as to the cleanliness of the piece, make sure you hit it with a suitable degreaser and let it dry before you put it in the tank. So once you've done that, simply connect up the negative terminal. Uh, and then one massively important point right now is that this and this must not come into direct contact with each other. Like, I can't stress that enough. So make sure you've got them a safe distance apart. And if you want to be extra careful like me, you can always tie wrap the anode to the side of the container so you know it's not going to go anywhere. So what we need to do now is make up our electrolyte. So an electrolyte solution may sound like a complicated carry-on, but let me assure you that it isn't. It's basically water mixed with sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate is also known as washing soda. Right, I picked this up on the detergent aisle at the supermarket. It cost me a quid. It'll last me ages. As a general rule, I like to use one and a half teaspoons of washing soda per litre of water. So I know there's eight litres of water in this bucket, so I'm going to use 12 teaspoons of washing soda. Give it a stir if it makes you feel better. Makes me feel better. So once your solution is in, this thing is about ready to go. Now ordinarily you would want to completely submerge this in the solution but because I'm going for some cool before and after thing, I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is tidy up this contact with a bit of sandpaper. So 
So, now that I'm happy with everything, it's time to switch on the battery charger. Now, this is not going to be an instantaneous process. This is going to take time. In my experience, several hours, possibly even 24 hours, depending on how badly rusted this thing is. So, for now, kick up your feet, let this thing simmer. Right, when you return, what you should be greeted with is a nice rusty soup. Now, don't worry, this is perfectly normal and means that it's working. Um, the only thing I've done since you last saw it is rotate this piece. That's basically to ensure I get an even reaction, but beyond that, I've just left it alone. So, I think it's probably had enough in there now, so it's time to get it out. Now it's important once you do remove it to quickly wash it off with clean water and then scrub it down with a scouring pad or a Brillo pad, anything like that, to get rid of any surface residue. So that's electrolysis. Now I'm hoping the camera is good enough to pick that out. Um, if you want it to stay like this, you must immediately dry it off and then cover it in a light film of oil to stop it reoxidizing. I'm going to put this down because that's heavy. Um, but essentially, that's it. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helps somebody out.